old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Let's step back to his childhood. How did Boston get introduced to the whole bodybuilding world? Because I know he started very, very young. I see pictures of him posing down and, you know, at shows with you guys. And uh, he was, what age did he start? Oh, God. He must have been like about three because I used to help people uh, pose for contests. Okay. They would come over and Boston would be right in the middle of it. I think this picture, he must be about two or three in this one. (laughs) <laughs> Look at his cute little underwear and socks. So, and then when I started competing, he used to go to all the shows. Uh, and then he wanted to uh, get up. One day, one of the judges put him on stage with me. And uh, <laughs> that was it. Uh, he said, okay, front double bicep. And he started posing with me. He knew all the poses, in other words, yeah. And he knew all the poses and bring the house down. <laughs> And then we get off stage, and uh, he was hooked. Uh, he started guest posing at the Muscle Beach shows. This one here he did uh, for kids with cancer at uh, Venice Beach. Wow. He would raise money. This kid would raise a lot of money for kids with cancer and the Special Olympics. Where, where did he get this idea of, like, because I know you, you told me a few stories about him wanting to always raise money and give money to, to charity, something like that. Where, where did he get this, this inkling to even do that? Well, see, at Gold's Gym, we used to uh, do things for kids with cancer, Special Olympics. Right. And uh, so he was posing just to play around on stage, you know, at Venice Beach. And then it came that he would start raising money. Gotcha. Gotcha. And he would sell his pictures for five bucks, uh, (laughs) go through the crowd and raise money. And he'd have a couple of hundred bucks in his hand. Yeah. To give to charity. And he, and, would he give, and he would give it to the charity. He wouldn't keep it. No, yeah. right. no. no. Yeah. He got on the news. He was on the He was all over the place. Muscle and fitness. He got in magazines, on the news. Now, you um, you owned a gym, a Gold's. Where was that gym again? Gold's Gym in Northridge on Reseda Boulevard, the famous Reseda Boulevard. And yeah. we had a lot of celebrities there. Who came through those doors? Oh, well, Hulk Hogan was there and his wife. And I trained his wife. Uh, That's great. Is, now that was one of the because I remember Ed Connors telling us that 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 John and you were like running one of the Gold's Gym franchises for him, right? Yeah, he had also one in Walnut Creek and in, in San Francisco area too. Oh, you own three gyms at one time? Well, John had the one in San Fran. When I met him, we had oh. shares in San Francisco. We had shares in the Walnut Creek in Northern California, right. and then uh, this one in L.A. <laughs> when did Boston so- learn these moves? Did you teach him these moves? Well, he, this, this kid was, um, he was in ballet at a young age and dance and, you know, he was so hyper. I had him in every mommy and me and every class <laughs> going on because he was, I'd take him from one thing to another or he'd drive me nuts. That's crazy. So he did a lot of this stuff himself. Um, he was like a little genius at a young age, uh, his, uh, vocabulary, uh, the way he thought, um, in school, the teachers all thought he was a genius. They just thought he was misbehaved. I mean, yeah. he would get kicked out of school because of his behavior. Right, right. Is it true that the, that your nanny almost quit when he was like four years old or something like that? Oh, yeah. the nanny. Yeah, he had nunchucks on the nanny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was screaming on top of the kitchen, calling me at work. And I had to run home and he had his nunchucks. And she's screaming because I had him in karate like at two and three. I mean, he was in diapers, and he's in karate, too. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question, because I know you told me this, and I thought this was really funny. Where did Boston get the audacity to decide to call his teachers by their first name? Like, how? It, like I don't think any kid does that. Like, <laughs> Did he feel like that was like his way of controlling them a little bit? 
I don't know, no, but he was on the first name basis. Every every teacher knew him, and they called him Bob. Every, every teacher knew the kid. Every counselor knew the kid yeah. um, because of his personality. That's funny. Where, where'd you come up with the name Boston? What made you decide to name him that? The father did. First, we were thinking about Justin, and everybody and their mother had Justin. Right. And the dad goes, how about Boston? I said, we got it, Boston. Yeah. And then everybody said, oh, how could you do that to your son? <laughs> It was a great way. Yeah. It was, good it was very original. Yeah, very original. Yeah, it's a good name. Oh, yeah, this is uh, Boston on stage. Look at that. This is pretty good. This was a pretty good show. This is an NXT <laughs> show. Oh, you did Muscle Mania at one point? What was that? Was that the Muscle Mania show you were in? Yeah, the Muscle Mania show. He, took, he bring the house down on that one. That's great. And How he, old is he, he there? Um, well, excuse me? How old is he there? Uh, six years old. Wow. Yeah, this is the, now he's starting to look like the Boston Life that we all know. This right. Because he always stuck his tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> that is the funny part. He always had that tongue sticking out. That's the Mike Monterazzo he got that from, I think. And he always had trainers. Uh, we had the trainers in the gym, and each one of them had him one day at a time, you know. That looked like a lot of weight he was, he was pulling there for, you know. Yeah, no, he was, he was extremely strong. <laughs> Even in karate, everybody always said how strong this kid was. He was doing flips. He was in gymnastics. He, I started him, I think he was three in gymnastics. He did very well. It seemed Every like sport the kid did, he did well. It seemed like he needed to be constantly uh, amused, right? Constantly what? Constantly kept busy, amused. Oh, yeah, I had to or I'd go crazy. This kid, if I didn't keep him busy mentally and physically, he'd drive me nuts. <laughs> How did I mean, he do in school? Okay, he was a straight-A student, and, and then he would get used for behavior. Oh, my God. They had to uh, give him, a uh, they call it a shadow, because he, was, he would disrupt class. Not only disrupt class, he could be dangerous. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah, he could be dangerous. So when he started acting up, they'd pick him up and they'd take him out. <laughs> Oh, my God. I mean, first, this kindergarten teacher thought he was retarded until she uh, separated him from everybody, and he was able to do his work faster than everybody and have everything right. That's funny. So did If he, he got anything less than an A, he was mad. Oh, so he was, he was, he was, did very well then in school then? Yeah, he, if he got a B, he was mad. It's amazing that he was just behaviorally so bad, you know, because uh, and it was and that was all the defiance pretty much going on. The right? defi well, um, I believe when he was uh, a child, um, I wanted to have a cesarean and the doctor waited. He wa he was in ICU for five days. Ugh. I believe something got messed up in his head because when he was six months old, I was holding him and it's like his eyes would twitch and he'd start pulling my hair and kicking me. And then I said to myself, something was wrong with this kid. Oh. I mean, I was a teacher. That's what I got my degree right. in, teaching the kids. And uh, I thought something got twisted as a child. Yeah. I mean, he took him to psychology, psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist said, well, when he hits puberty, he will either go the other way, he'll get worse, or he'll get better. <laughs> Thank God he got better. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking I was going to have a guy, you know, some kid would, in jail, or I was going to have someone famous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did they, did they, I don't even know if back then they even did that. Did they give kids ADD medication back then? We tried giving him some sort of medication and he uh, knocked the door down. Oh. <laughs> he knocked the bathroom. He locked, yeah, and, I, and, I, and um, it was like, there's was no it. way. That was there for the medication.